Hi everyone. So in my previous lecture, I have discussed about the uh, development of these three equations. The equation 1.10, which was developed by uh, solving uh, this equation, uh, dv over dt is equal to g minus c over m into v. And we have discussed this equation in detail in my previous lecture. So, and also uh, I have explained you that how we have derived this equation, uh, equation 1.12 by using the definition of acceleration that if the limit delta t approaches to 0 delta v over delta t is equal to a then we can use this equation in order to calculate the velocity where uh, this v is actually the uh, delta v is actually the change in velocity between two intervals and this is the time uh, interval i mean the difference between the two uh, specific points of time so we have developed this equation and now we have these three equations so in order to uh, verify this model or these three equations now um, let's solve one example or let's do one small experiment that can be uh, that can be said as a numerical experiment so i'm going to take this example from the book uh, from the textbook that i have given uh, you by email uh, the numerical methods for engineers by Stephen and Raymond. So, uh, what is this example? Let's see. There's a parachuter, and that parachuter is going to jump. And uh, the mass of this parachuter is 68.1 kg, and the drag coefficient is 12.5 kg per second. And we have to calculate the velocity prior to opening the chute. For example, once the parachuter will jump, so it will be a free falling conditions. I mean, the guy did not open the parachute and he would be uh, going towards the ground in, in a free falling state. So as the time will increase, the uh, guy will get or the parachuter will get more velocity before opening the chute. Once he, he, uh, he will open the parachute, then uh, the force equilibrium will be different so we are actually concerned about before opening the chute because it will be a free falling condition and as uh, with the passage of time the velocity of the object or the parachuter will increase because uh, he is in the form of a free falling state so first uh, we will use this equation this equation is developed by uh, solving or by integrating the previous equation that I have shown and this is the exact solution so uh, what are the different parameters let's see different parameters uh, before we start we have to decide the time interval for example we can say the time interval is one second I mean you want to calculate the velocity at every one second after every two seconds or at a microsecond level for example like this point one point uh, point zero one second point zero two second uh, and so on so if you want to calculate the velocity at uh, one second uh, then we will compare this later on first let's decide the time interval is equal to one second okay for example we will calculate the velocity like one second two second three second four second five second and so on and then uh, what is the mass the mass is actually the 68.1 kg and then uh, the drag coefficient is 12.5 kg per second and the value of g is 9.81 meter per second okay so let's apply equation 1.10 first so when the time is equal to 0 and the velocity is equal to 0 uh, that is the first information that we have from this problem because before jumping uh, or before the start of this problem the parachuter is in the plane or it, that is in the form of a rest or I mean for example if he is going to jump from from a cliff or from a mountain or from the top of a building we, we don't have any information so if uh, he is standing on the top of a mountain or cliff so he is at rest so when the time is zero and th uh, so it means the initial velocity of that object is also equal to zero so let's proceed next so this is the equation and uh, time is equal to one second uh, now I, I want to take the help of uh, Microsoft Excel so I have developed 
uh, I have to develop one uh, small Excel program in order to solve uh, the equation. For example, let's talk about the time, time in seconds. So, like uh, one second time, uh, okay, zero, one, two, or let's make one equation this one plus one second. So, after every interval, control C and we go up to 12 seconds and now we have to calculate the velocity v so velocity from equation one point equation 1.1 1 .1. and that velocity will be in meter per second okay so now this is the equation that we have gm over c into 1 minus e okay so let me apply this equation here i have this information here okay so okay g uh, velocity is equal to g 9.81 multiplied by mass that is 68.1 divided by drag coefficient 12.5 and then multiplied by 1 minus e the value of e is 2.71 raised to the power minus c c is 12.5 divided by 68.1 uh, the mass and then multiplied by time that is here okay so let's see okay there is some some mistake here in fact so 1 minus e raised to the power minus 12.5 divided by 68.1 multiplied by 1 this whole expression should be multiplied by the this expression should be multiplied by time multiplied by time and then this bracket and then the other one here okay yes so this is the velocity and this is at time is equal to zero second so let's apply the same formula for the other time intervals and we will get the velocity for different uh, time intervals like one second the velocity is 8.94 and 16.4 22.6 so this we have uh, already solved up to this point in the class with this equation and it was quite obvious okay next so next uh, I want to apply the equation 1.12 so for equation 1.12 this is the equation and okay what is this ti ti is the previous interval and ti plus 1 is actually the next interval of time and VTI is the velocity at the previous interval of time okay so for example if we are going to calculate V1 so here it will be V0 I mean the velocity at time is equal to 0 second okay and if we are going to calculate here V2 the velocity at 2 seconds so here the velocity will be V1 or the velocity that is the for the previous time interval that is the one second and here is the difference of the time or time interval that is one second it will remain constant because we are going to uh, find the uh, find the velocity at every uh, second of the time for example it will be three minus two it will be four minus three it will be one minus zero and so on okay so let's discuss this case for example if the time is equal to uh, this case uh, i already explained that when the time is zero so the initial velocity is zero so it means for the first for this case i mean for the first one 
uh, here we will be having zero velocity and this will be the next time interval this is the initial time interval zero second here so the next time interval is one second and for this time interval one second we need the velocity and that is we are going to solve here so this is the equation and we want the velocity at this one second and this is the ti and the vti is equal to zero okay so just put the values here put g 9.81 c uh, 12.5 over 68.1 and this is the initial velocity and it will become zero and this is the ti plus one one second and minus zero plus zero so if you solve this equation you will get the v1 is equal to 9.81 meter per second okay so it means that for this case uh, for uh, when the time is one second the, uh, the velocity should be 9.8 meter per second from from the equation let me um, in the center okay and then uh, we will use the other equation equation 1.12 I will apply this later on but we have this information that time is equal to zero it is zero and when the time is one second it is 9.8 meter per second okay so and now I'm going to solve the same uh, equation but for the next interval of time when ti plus one will be equal to two second and ti will be equal to one second and vti will be equal to 9.81 meter per second okay so if I put this you can see here now this is the next time interval this one is the previous time interval so it will become ti for this equation ti will be equal to one second and the corresponding velocity vti will be 9.81 meter per second so for this time one second the velocity is actually 9.81 meter per second okay and now for the next interval of time i'm just going to put uh, this vti as 9.81 meter per second because this is the velocity prior to this time interval and this is the time corresponding time one second and this is the velocity for that one second so it is 9.81 and here is the one and the new time is two second and we need the velocity for this uh, new time interval okay so if we put the values exactly same fashion just uh, re replace time with two and vti with 9.81 meter per second so you will get the answer and that will be sent 17.85 meter per second and in, in the same way for example if you want to repeat this process for the next time interval we can do that for example for the next time interval now the ti will be the previous one two second and the corresponding velocity vti will be 17.85 meter per second and we need the velocity for this time interval three seconds so if you put the values here in this equation you will get now the time is three uh, ti plus one is three and this is the previous time ti two second and this is the velocity and if you solve this equation you should get uh, the answer 24.4 meter per second so that will be the v3 okay now i'm going to apply the same equation in the microsoft excel okay so how i can do that this is the initial time we know that we, this is pti so here let me delete this one okay i minimize this one and let's go up here is the equation okay so that is equal to g 9.81 minus c over m c over m c is 12.5 over m is 68.1 multiplied by vti and vti is the velocity previous velocity so this is the vti plus one and this is the uh, vti zero or vti which it actually is the previous velocity so i can just click here this cell okay and then multiplied by now this is the next time interval this one on which i want to calculate the velocity i will click it here so this is the time one second minus the previous time this one ti okay and then plus this velocity the previous velocity so this is the equation in this equation this is g c over m and this is h7 is this velocity the previous velocity and this is the time the current time on which you want to calculate the velocity minus the previous time interval plus this one okay i just going i'm just going to press enter so now we have the same answer that we have calculated for uh, 
this time is equal to one second okay so now I'm going to apply this for all time intervals up to 12 seconds so I just control C and control V so here you can see now we have the answer for example when the time is two seconds now the answer is uh, almost same 17.85 or 2 and for the time when the time is 3 seconds so it is 24.4 almost 24.4 seconds so and so on so here now you can see we have used two methods or two equations equation uh, equation uh, 1.10 and equation uh, 1.12 so with the help of these two equations we have calculated the velocity okay and now we can compare for example this solution this one is actually the exact solution and this one is actually the numerical solution or which we have used the uh, let me center and let me round round it okay so yes up to two digits so now we have a comparison of uh, the two velocities from equation 1.10 and 1.12. We can make a chart and we can compare these two velocity in, in a chart. How we can do that? Just go to insert. Insert and then here you can go to the x, y, uh, the type of chart if you, if you know that it's fine. But uh, this is the x, y. If you want to compare the points and the lines, so just click it here so uh, it will make a chart by itself so you can see this is the velocity with equation 1.10 and this is the equ velocity equation 1.12 so there's a minor difference between these two velocities but here so we have solved the problem using two equations but now i want to teach you one very interesting thing you know what what is that that is this that if limit delta t approaches to zero you can use this equation so we have difference between the values for example if if you see that we we have like there's a percentage difference how much is that percentage difference for example percentage difference or i can say error you can calculate by just subtracting the, these two values this one minus this one okay so divided by this value multiplied by 100 so this is the percentage difference so for the first value there's a percentage difference of like 9.7 and let's see for the remaining values so it is like uh, this percentage difference is uh, decreasing gradually like from 9 to to down okay so let's do one more experiment and what is that experiment now i'm going to change the time interval from one second to half second so what will happen on this percentage difference or these values whether these values will become closer or these values will become more okay let's first uh, increase uh, the time difference for example I just make it 2 okay 2 control C and control V so if you make it 2 seconds so here you can see the percentage difference has been doubled 19.8 this is 16 and this is 19.62 but before when it was one second it is uh, it was uh, it was less so this is the same uh, the problem in the book if you want to see, compare your values in the book for example in, in the book they have calculated up to 12 seconds so up to 12 seconds they have 47.5 uh, second the, the answer the answer is pretty much similar 12 point at, at this value 12 47.5 so the same answer is here as well and the book in the book the same problem or the same chart has been prepared in, in the end for example this is the other solution which I have explained you that you can do that and again at 12 using the other way it is like around the similar 50 uh, I'm sorry 50 yeah so it is 49.96 approximately same 50 uh, 50 meter per second and here 47 so for the time at 10 a second it is uh, 48 so approximately the same value is here in the, in the problem and in the problem uh, in the end of the chapter he has compared these two charts which uh, I, I all, all already has prepared and I have shown you this is the same chart okay but it is for the more interval of time and one more thing we can observe here so as the time interval is increasing I mean for the end of the time 
the uh, the difference is keep on reducing you can also see it here okay so it means if we increase the time interval the difference has become more now I'm going to convert back to the same uh, one second time interval so I just put it back so now if the time interval is one second again the percentage difference has been reduced okay now let's decrease further the time interval now I'm going to reduce the time interval to 0 0.5 second so let's see what happens okay so now you can see this 0.5 and sorry actually I have to put this in for my formula this plus 0 0.5 and here we have 0 0.5 okay see now the difference has been become half the percentage difference it means now our values are becoming very closer to the analytical values or to the actual or the true values so it means the time interval plays a very important role smaller the time interval more accurate will be the values larger the time intervals there will be more error in your values and the percentage difference will be more so this is the whole uh, concept which i want to deliver today and that that was the part of the previous lecture but due to some problems or some issues uh, due to the time issues and some communications or some voice issues i was not able to deliver it in the proper way in the class okay so if you have any questions you can leave your comments you can send me an email and yeah this is all about this lecture thank you have a good day